Hi everyone! Welcome back to Science at Home and for today we're gonna be discussing on the idea on how elements are arranged within the periodic table. Now usually elements are arranged based on their physical properties but before that let us try to look on the historical perspective on how did we come up on the modern periodic table that we know today. So it all began in 1829 when a German scientist named Johann de Berenier formulated the law of triads in which he grouped certain elements into trees wherein the average of the first and third elements atomic weight or atomic mass is equal to the atomic mass of the second element. So let us try to have this example. So we have here lithium, sodium, and potassium. So if we'll try to look, lithium and potassium are the first and third elements. So if we'll try to look on the average of their atomic weight, so we have a value of 23.0195, which is equal or almost equivalent to the atomic weight of sodium, which is 22.99. Another example right here is the triads of calcium, strontium, and barium, wherein the average of the atomic masses of calcium and barium is equal to 88.703, which is the rough estimate for the atomic weight of strontium, which is 87.62. On the other hand, another scientist in the name of John Newlands in 1864 formulated the law of octaves, wherein elements with similar properties are arranged within groups with eight elements for every group. So this is the example of the law of octaves where John Newlands have formulated. But it was in 1869 where the modern periodic table was developed. But first, let us have Julius Lothar Mayer in 1869, wherein he was the first one to develop a certain idea in which elements are arranged based on their physical properties. But the modern periodic table that we all know today was formulated also in the same year wherein a Russian scientist named Dmitry Mendeleev grouped the elements based on their similar properties in two groups and periods. So as we all know, the modern periodic table that we have today is comprised of 118 elements which are grouped depending whether it is a metal or a non-metal. And also... Within the modern periodic table, we can see certain properties of the elements such as its atomic number, the atomic symbol together with its name, and its atomic mass. Now, let us now try to look on the features of the modern periodic table. So we have here numbers that are found within the rows and columns. But what are these numbers, by the way? So the first one is the period or the row number. So we have here seven rows within the periodic table, wherein this represents the energy level, with the exception of the d-block elements, in which, in order to determine the energy level within d-block elements, we need to subtract the row number in minus one. So for example, the energy level on the fourth row elements in the transition elements are found within the 3D block. Next, we have here the groups or the groups or the family numbers which represents the columns. So usually elements that are found within the same group or family number have the same chemical properties such as the number of valence electrons. So as we can see in the illustration of the periodic table, the elements groups can be classified as either A or B. So the A elements refers to the representative elements or the main element. Meanwhile, the group B elements refers to the transition elements or the transition metals. And lastly, the elements in the periodic table are also divided into blocks, wherein this refers to the orbital sublevels of their electron configuration. So usually, the blocks refers to the highest orbital level in its electron configuration. But how can we describe the different properties of elements within the periodic table? So this time, we will now go to the different periodic trends or how are the properties of the elements are arranged within the periodic table. So let us first have the atomic radius. When we talk about the atomic radius, this refers to the half of the distance between the nuclei of two adjacent atoms. So when we talk about the different periodic trends, we need to look on how are these properties varying within the periodic table. So usually, we'll try to look on its position. So we will try to look on how these periodic trends changes from left to right of the periodic table and from top to bottom. So in this case, so let us first have the atomic radius. So the atomic radius of the elements, when we go from left to right, so it tends to decrease. Meanwhile, it tends to increase when we go from top to bottom. Okay, next we have the ionization energy. Now, when we talk about the ionization energy, this refers to the minimum energy that is required in order to remove an electron from its valence shell. So, simply because that the term ionization refers to the idea on which electrons are being removed from the atom. So, how does the ionization energy varies in the periodic table? Now, when we go from left to right, so it tends to increase. On the other hand, it tends to decrease when we go from top to bottom. So simply because that non-metals usually have higher ionization energies as compared to metals. Okay, next we have the electron affinity. Now this is somewhat related to the ionization energy, but this time the electron affinity refers to the minimum energy in order for the electrons to be attracted by the atom. So still, so still, 
the electron affinity so still okay so still electron affinity varies so still electron affinity increases as we go from left to right and it tends to decrease when we go from top to bottom and lastly we have the idea of electronegativity in which this refers to the ability of a certain atom to attract electrons during chemical bonding now usually okay so usually okay so usually okay, so typical so usually we okay. So usually nonmetals have state okay. So usually nonmetals have higher electronegativity values than metals. So therefore, when we go so therefore the electronegativity tends to increase when we go from left to right and it decreases when we go from top to bottom. So that concludes our episode for today. This is your Sir Dave saying keep safe and always have fun learning science at home. Goodbye!